According to author Marcy Shimoff, we have about 60,000 thoughts per day. 95% of these thoughts are the same ones we had yesterday, and the day before that, and the day before that. Of these habitual thoughts, 80% are negative. We are wired to notice the negative. This may be a trait we inherited from a caveman who ran away every time he heard a twig break. This paranoid Neanderthal survived, while the more optimistic thinkers who kept walking and said, oh, it's just a squirrel, got eaten. And so today, any time we mispronounce a word or slip on a stretch of ice and freeze for a moment like Wile e. Coyote before falling to the ground, humiliated in front of that girl you like, we have this paranoid Neanderthal in our heads shouting that we look like an idiot and we should probably run away. The barrage of negativity from the caveman begins to deplete our energy. And when we have no energy left, when we feel too tired to take a deep breath or drink a glass of cool water so it can trickle down into our heart and put out the burning feeling of shame, the caveman won't let us, because to be calm is to be vulnerable. When things go right, when we say something clever, when we use that new word we just learned from reading Faulkner, the caveman doesn't even notice. What is good and great is overshadowed by what is bad and unknown. Every squirrel becomes a saber tooth. This is our inheritance. We have a negative bias because we are designed for survival more than happiness. We are almost programmed to become depressed. It should be no surprise that depression cost America $210 billion annually. Yet depression is usually treatable. Since we are no longer living in caves or hunted by saber-toothed tigers, our negative bias is unnecessary. And so, if you, like me, struggle with depressive thinking, the best thing you can do is update your inner caveman through the practice of cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT. The essence of this treatment is becoming more aware of your thoughts and learning to challenge their negative bias. To do this, take your inner caveman out of the cave, dress him in a suit and tie, and put him in a modern courtroom. In this courtroom, there are rules and guidelines. Evidence must be examined impartially. Claims must be substantiated. Alternatives must be considered. A judge clarifies and enforces these rules. But who or what is on trial? Your life, your experiences, and ultimately your happiness. The caveman is the prosecution, shouting condemnations, demanding the highest penalties, penalizing the smallest missteps. Guilty, stupid, dangerous, he says, because remember, afraid is alive. With CBT, however, the prosecution no longer has free reign in your mind. The judge ensures there is also a competent defense attorney. The defense attorney's job is to challenge the prosecutor and argue a more optimistic version of events. She can object when the prosecutor misrepresents evidence or makes assumptions that cannot be proven. So much of our life that is beautiful, simple, and precious, we wrongfully interpret as a threat. Maybe when you slipped on that ice, for a moment that girl you like was concerned for you, and maybe in this moment she felt an extra beat in her heart and laughed because she just realized she likes you too. And the good news is that in practically every first world country, we believe in the right to a fair and unbiased trial overseen by an impartial judge, and we believe that everyone is entitled to a competent defense attorney. It's an ideal, one that does not always happen, but it can happen to you and me every day in our own minds, because it is in this inner court that the most egregious miscarriage of justice continues day in and day out throughout the entire world.